Hey, what's up YouTube? So we're on to client number five. This guy is a friend of mine. I used to be a gym instructor. You'll know that if you watch the other videos. So Malcolm approached me, said, hey Mike, can you fix me up with a site? So I'm not gonna talk much about the kickoff meeting or anything like that. I'm gonna get stuck straight into what I learned design-wise and what I learned in terms of uh, the actual site build and a few mistakes. So if we take a look at the website, as you can see, it's a dark website. Malcolm, he said, I don't like bright, shiny websites. I want it to be dark, easy on the eyes. So that presented me with, with a challenge right away because I'd never uh, built a dark, designed a dark website. So I did some research and I found out that you don't want the text to be white. You don't want pure white text on a pure black background because what happens is the text looks like it's literally lit up. There's a bit of a glow around it which can make it difficult to read and there's an example of that in this blog post here as you can see. And if you take a look at the design I've gone with a panel design and so each panel is a slightly different shade of black but there's enough contrast to break the content up into nice digestible chunks which is what you want to do and it keeps it easy on the eye. So let's uh, talk about the hero image. Now this is something I got from Mike Locke. He's got a YouTube channel, I bought his course, his videos and this is a technique I picked up from him and it's, there's, a, is, there's what you call a vignette around this image. So it's fading out to black on the sides, draws your attention into the content in the middle. And I got this from Mike as well. Uh, he really got me off to a good start. So here I've seen him use this technique where you incorporate a nice image, a nice appealing, high quality image as a backdrop to some of your copy but you fade it out and it fades in to the background and it's fading there's enough opacity that the body content is still very uh, visible and easy to read I watched Mike make some custom icons and that came in real handy because we needed an, we needed an icon to resemble uh, supplements. We had a shopping bag on there and it didn't quite fit. He's selling online supplements. So just having witnessed Mike making a custom icon, because I already had that in my brain, when the challenge came up, straight away, I had that sense of yes, this is possible. I've seen someone do that. So witnessing other people uh, building things, uh, whether it be code or design, is gonna put you in good stead. Uh, when you're meeting with clients, solutions will pop up. Yeah, I remember, I saw a guy and he solved that issue this way, that kind of thing. So let me show you uh, some of the other designs, which to be honest, I, revisited the project I think a year and a half maybe two years later and redesigned a few things and added a few pages so my design chops had improved a little bit since then maybe well that might not be entirely true because I've been I had been working with a graphic designer uh, up until that point but anyway let me draw your attention to this design so a few things this package here in the center, you'll notice it's a slightly different shade and it's bigger than the others, drawing your um, attention to that one. We've used a different, slightly uh, lighter text for the text, the uh, information that isn't as important, but we still want it in there. And it just looks nice and elegant. And here, again, a technique I got from Mike, Add in a background image that nicely fades in uh, to what's above it and it, it just gives it that something it's just showing through just a just a little bit rather than it just being plain and I've used the same did the same thing 
on this page at the bottom there's a woman there tying her shoelaces and uh, that goes well with the dark theme so let me uh, talk about oh yes how do i come up with designs i've heard people talk about designing in the browser and whenever i hear that it always kind of puzzles me a little bit to be fair i've not really looked into it but when i want to come up with a design the first thing i do is i get out pen and paper and a sketch so this is before the prices page even existed it first existed as a sketch and with a sketch i can lay out the content it doesn't have to be neat and tidy it's very rough and i just get a general idea of okay how is it going to fit we're going to have two boxes there would three boxes underneath that work okay how is the content underneath that going to work how is the uh, the gift card section going to be displayed so i sketch it out i put it into photoshop once i'm happy with it in photoshop then i begin to build it out in the browser so i might do like um one sketch there then i'll real nail down into like the specifics of the box how is the data going to be represented in the box so let's talk about the build so at this point i wasn't really writing much custom jquery i was looking into it i was presented with this challenge of having the nav bar when you start to scroll down watch the nav bar it becomes a solid black so that was custom jquery now this is a wordpress site and when you want to inject your own custom javascript you need to uh, it's called enqueuing the script and you do that via a file called the functions.php and uh, so you'll be doing that you'll be editing that functions php in your child theme when i started to delve into this i started to appreciate how the website is actually loaded in the browser what is the browser actually doing when it's loading a website and if you look at this uh, source code here for the home page you'll notice all of these style sheets and uh, scripts for your javascript now then i began to think about well okay i'm using this plugin on the site but I don't need to use the plugin on the home page. Hey, I should take that script out. There's no point in loading that script on the home page if I'm not using the plugin. So I really started to delve deeper into performance. And this website became one of my. Uh, I used to enjoy having a play around with this website because you can test the performance, make a little tweak see how it affects the performance and you get what's called a waterfall and it shows you how much time it's taking to pull in all of the scripts the fonts the images so i started to get into compressing the images down to an acceptable size and that kind of thing so it really um began to i began to see how deep this rabbit hole goes and of course I was only beginning to scratch the surface. So what mistakes did I make? Well, I should have, could have approached other personal trainers around the world and other gyms as well, because I got a lot, we got a lot of good feedback on the design. Malcolm was asking his clients, uh, why did you choose me? And they would say, they would often say, well, I went onto the website, it looked great, very professional, and I, I decided to go with you. So. I could have put together maybe a PDF and approached other personal trainers and just see what happens. Why not? Just approach them, say, hey, I made this website for a personal trainer. He got some great results. Uh, he inducted a lot of new clients because they liked the professionalism of the website. I could do the same for you. That kind of thing. There's no harm in it. So that's what I would have done different. Uh, in my sales process, I have become much more proactive rather than just waiting for it to come to you i've 
kind of woken up to that now. So that's what I would have done differently. The other thing is in how I explain my design decisions. So I made a dis design decision, <laughs> I guess you could say. Well, yeah, it was design design decision to go with uh, a large hero image at the top with uh, an opening a quote to give you an idea of what the page is about but on very small laptops that hero image would take up pretty much the whole of the screen and Malcolm and his partner were worried that people wouldn't scroll now through all of the hundreds of thousands of hours that companies have done in user experience testing we know that users scroll but I didn't articulate that very well and I think it kind of worried them a little bit there's actually a book on this. If you read this uh, paragraph describing the book, and in many cases, how you communicate about your work with stakeholders, clients, and other non-designers is more critical than the designs themselves, simply because the most articulate person usually wins. And that is such, it's such a nugget, it's so true the most articulate person usually wins. So there you have it, that's client number five. I promised you the first five clients. I wanted to give you an idea of how my journey began and progressed. The other clients, they're not so much my clients, they were other projects that involved other people, uh, graphic designers, branding teams, um, photographers, so I need to make sure I've got permission first. I have to tread carefully because usually when you use a site as a case study, you would offer the client some kind of discount because not everybody wants the world to know, yes, we built it with WordPress, you know? So I have to tread carefully. I'm gonna be sharing more of what I've learned and the mistakes I've made throughout other videos, throughout my tutorial series, which what, which I wanna pick up again. So anyhow, I hope you got something from this. Any questions, leave them below. I'll do my very best to get to them. Like the video if you found it useful, share the playlist if you found it useful. It lets YouTube know that the content is of, of value. I'll leave it I'll leave it there. Enjoy your weekend and I'll catch you later. Peace.